Yeah, hello there. Confirmation this morning that the Britain's financial regulator has fined the Swiss bank UBS nearly £30 million for failing to properly scrutinise a trader who lost the bank £1.4 billion. Kweku Adaboli, a relatively junior member of staff, was allowed to take vast and risky market positions because of what uh, the FSA calls serious weaknesses in the bank's procedures, management systems and internal controls. He was convicted of fraud and jailed for seven years last week. Let's uh, speak to Chris Roebuck, who uh, now is a visiting professor at the Cass Business School, used to work at UBS uh, for a number of years and now mm -hmm. acts as a consultant to many banks on leadership issues. Uh, Mr Roebuck, very good morning to you. Uh, this is a bank that didn't know what one of its employees was doing, to its great cost, yep. of course. Indeed. It happened at UBS, but in your view, could this have happened at any bank? To be honest, this could happen at any bank. This could happen at any organisation where one employee has the ability to blow the whole world apart. And to be blunt, you know, it often happens where either A, somebody does something they shouldn't do, or they don't do things they should do. And if you look at, for example, BP Gulf of Mexico, another classic example of people not doing what they should have done because they assume that management wanted them to do something different. Bhopal, exactly the same thing. So in this particular case, what was going on was that a certain element of the bank didn't get the message from the top management of the bank in Zurich and to some degree went rogue in their own way in an attempt to make as much money as possible for themselves and the bank. Rogue traders have mm -hmm. always existed. Do you think they always will? Yeah, uh, statistically, you are going to have in any group of people a certain number who are going to break the rules. Either a very small group from the perspective of for their own personal gain, but also there will be another group who will do so because they misinterpret the signals from the top of the organisation. The main signal that people at the top of organisations keep sending down is, we want to make more money, we want to make more money. Now, they then subsequently caveat that with comments about, but we need to do it in an ethical way and we need to stick to our risk procedures, but the only message the people lower down here is, we want to make money. And they take that as carte blanche to make money in any way you like, uh, as long as it's not too illegal. If given that banks are such big organisations, mm -hmm. and as you say, miscommunications, I think, to a certain degree, you're suggesting are inevitable, is it mm -hmm. reasonable to fine a bank then for this sort of thing? I think it's reasonable because th this was a failure of both the electronic systems and the leadership systems. It was a failure of the electronic systems because this individual was allowed to get to a position where they were so totally exposed and the electronic systems did not detect the pieces of the jigsaw to make a picture and say, hang on, alarm bells should ring here. Also, in terms of the leadership systems, it should have been absolutely clear to this individual's boss to make sure that people on their team were sticking to the rules. OK, is there, is there any part of the world where there is a big financial centre where this sort of thing just never, ever happens? No. And things go wrong everywhere. You know, we've even seen that things went wrong in the Vatican recently. So if you look across the world's financial centres, certainly there is uh, increasing regulation and control in the US, increasing regulation and control in Europe, in some centres in Asia. But there are other places in the world where, to be perfectly honest, you know, we say that he was rogue compared to these other places in the world. What he did was like a Sunday school outing. <laughs> and it's those, it's those places that actually present risk for the future, not so much Europe or uh, Hong Kong, Singapore and New York. OK, Chris Roebuck from the Cass Business School, thank you very much thank for you. joining us to discuss that.